Good morning. Thank you. Welcome to worship. I'm so glad to see all of you here this morning. Thank you for choosing to worship together. And for our friends worshiping with us at home, we're grateful that you're a part of this community and here with us this morning. Uh, I have so many announcements today. Uh, so settle in. Uh, first, today is our last day of our quilt fundraiser. Uh, this uh, I've, I've said it before, but it's really, really special <laughs> that our quilters have done this for our congregation. I don't know any other congregation in which, uh, particularly some of our elders, but uh, just the quilters would, would donate um, all of the supplies and their time and their, um, and their skills to give to the congregations, especially the kids, to go to camp and the high school kids to go to the youth gathering. So it's a really special gift. If you would like to purchase a table runner or a baby blanket or a um, placemat, they're out there. Um, we don't have someone selling until after the service, but if there was one you had your heart set on, you can grab it now and then pay after the service. I mean, don't fight over them. Uh, but yeah, we, we're so grateful. Uh, the camp and the uh, and the youth gathering, it's really expensive for the families, and so uh, we're really grateful for all of your generosity um, so far and always, uh, so thank you for that. Um, you still have opportunities to buy cookies on Wednesdays, too. Okay, that was one of the announcements. I'm going to invite up uh, two Brian's. <laughs> this Brian first. <laughs> Except their final concert every year, they bring in friends of Kandurai, which are singers from all around town who join just for one concert. So on May 5, there will probably be the most singers you've ever seen on this chancel. And uh, Mount Calvary members get to attend for free. So if you would like a free complimentary ticket, email me, brian.dion at mountcalvary.com, and I will hook you up with a free ticket. Hope to see you there. Thank you, Brian. Okay, other Brian. <laughs> There's a lot of Brian's in this congregation. Good morning. Um, so uh, I think there's a special slide. But um, anyway, after after worship today in the fireside room, you've heard Tom and Kelly and Jeremy and Rebecca and a few other people talk about this over the past few weeks and months. Um, we're having our first of three congregational listening sessions about the process of becoming a Reconciling in Christ congregation, which is a congregation that is um, deliberately and especially welcoming to the queer community. So those conversations start today, and then today we're doing sort of RIC 101, um, and then the next, it's the next two Sundays, right? Yeah, the next two Sundays, um, there are two more sessions following on that. So um, please join us for a conversation about that in the fireside room after worship today. Thank you, Brian. Okay, I guess I didn't have as many announcements as I thought. <laughs> it felt like a lot. I really hope you stay for a while afterwards and join that conversation as well. All right, I'll invite you to stand as you're able. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, sing unto the Lord, for he has done excellent things. Grace be unto you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of all the earth.
Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts in the third chapter, beginning with the 12th verse. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by your own power or piety, we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him his perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold Though all the, through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. Oh, 
righteousness he when I pray. In my distress be my hope and my stay. The second reading comes from 1 John, first chapter, beginning with the first verse. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will have been, what What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or know him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Halle, halle, halleluja, halle, halle, halleluja, halle, halle, halleluja, halleluja, halleluja. Now Christ is raised up from death, he will never die again. All who follow his way. Shall have life in him. Alleluia, alleluia. Alle, alle, alle. Alleluia, alle, alle, alle. Alleluia, alle, alle. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to, here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So our gospel reading today starts with, uh, so it's Luke chapter 24, and it starts with verse 36b, which means you like cut off half the verse. So the beginning of the chapter, or verse 36 says, while, he was, while they were still talking about these things, while they were still talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, peace be with you. The first question we should ask is, what were they still talking about? Now, you might know this story. Uh, It's one that comes up fairly often, every few years, Uh, not as often as we get the story of Thomas and Jesus appearing to the disciples and then to Thomas, but uh, it's the story of these two disciples, not part of the 12, but two of these disciples of Jesus who were walking along the road on their way to Emmaus. And as they're walking... Jesus starts to walk with them, and they don't recognize him. So they're talking to each other about all the things that had just happened, how Jesus had died, and all the things, the the suffering that he endured, uh, the trial with the religious leaders, all the things. They They were sharing all of the things together. And Jesus asks them, while they're walking along the road, like, what are you guys talking about? And their answer is, are you the only person who doesn't know? I mean, when you think about something, when a community goes through something traumatic, what do you do? You talk. You process it. You share your experience. Here's what I saw. Here's what I felt when I, when I experienced that. Like, that's what people do. And so they look to him and they say, like, you got to be nuts. <laughs> you don't know. And so they tell him all of the things about himself. And as they walk along the road, Jesus stops and he pulls out the scriptures and he he explains the scriptures to them, the things that he had been preaching um, all along. uh, He tells them again. And so they, uh, they, they make their way and it's getting late and they say to him, like, don't, don't leave yet. Why don't you stay and eat with us? So they sit down and they eat a meal. They, they break the bread and it, and it says as soon as, uh, they, they break the bread, Jesus disappears from their sight. And they look to each other, and they realize this is him. And they say this line that I, that I love. Uh, we don't get any of this story today, but this line that they say is, weren't our hearts burning within us while we were still on the road? Like, we knew when he was telling us those scriptures, our hearts were burning within us. And so it says in the, in the scripture, again, all of this comes right before our reading today, they, they immediately run right back. So they've been walking all day on this, on this road, and they run right back to the rest of the disciples, and they start to tell them, you won't believe. We just saw Jesus. And it says, while they were talking about this, so they're still telling their story and how miraculous this was and how crazy it was, Jesus stands among them and says, peace be with you. And so you, you just heard the rest of the story. Uh, he, he, just like last week, if you were here, uh, when we talked about Thomas, like he want, Thomas wanted to touch uh, Jesus' wounds and like his humanness, right? Like, I want to make sure you are real. 
right in front of us. And, and the same way, Jesus proves not his divinity here as much as his humanity. Like, it is, it's me. Like, you can see me, you can touch me. Go ahead, I'm right here. In fact, do you have anything to eat? Uh, and they give him some fish. You know, there, like, there's nothing more human than all of these things. Touch, feel, eat. And then this last line, he says, after, once again, he explains the scriptures to them again. All of these things he had preached before. Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning, in, beginning from Jerusalem. And then he says, you are witnesses to these things. You are witnesses to these things. And I think about these stories that we tell, um, I mean, we have for 2,000 years, you know, thousands of years. We, we didn't get to be there. You know, we didn't get to walk alongside the disciples and watch Jesus heal people and, and teach the people. We didn't get to watch the Sermon on the Mount. We didn't get to watch um, the people who were excluded be included and loved. We didn't get to see uh, the trial that happened, the religious leaders that were threatened. We didn't get to see uh, Jesus die on the cross. We didn't get these moments of Jesus appearing and uh, letting us touch him, feel him eat a meal with him. We didn't, we didn't get any of those things. All we got, what we have, what brought us to this place 2,000 years later is because somebody told the story. Somebody else's witness brought us here. Both the witnesses of the Bible that we have written down, these stories and experiences that people had of seeing Jesus those three days a week later, but we also have the stories that people keep telling. Somebody shared the faith with you. Somebody told a story to you that was intriguing enough that you decided today you'd come and sit down and hear a little bit more with other people who were curious too. You know, we have other people's witnesses that brought us to this place. And I, I don't want to get like overly metaphorical uh, if it's not meant to. But, you know, all we have is a witness. We, we didn't have these, like, concrete moments like, like some of these early disciples and apostles did. It does seem, like, this line, this beginning line, uh, while they were talking about this, Jesus himself appeared among them. And again, I don't know if this is meant to be as metaphorical as I want to make it, but it does seem to be the way it happens. When we share our witness with one another, when we share our stories about God breaking into our lives, when we share stories about hope when it doesn't feel like there is any, when you're grieving and you find some joy like sprinkled in, those moments when things come together in ways that don't make sense at all, that are holy, when we tell those stories, Jesus himself is there. You know, I, I love that I get to tell stories. It's fun. <laughs> I like the work that I get to do. Uh, but the most meaningful stuff in this role is getting to hear them. You know, I feel really lucky for the stories that people have shared with me. All of those things, you know, hope when there shouldn't have been hope. Moments of, of people coming together when things felt broken, love and support and, and things we can't explain, these holy and tender moments that we don't always share with each other. When I hear them, it's like those disciples who, who later said, weren't, our hearts were burning within us, weren't they? Like we knew something holy was happening. I don't know if you've had experiences like these. I hope that you have. I have a, a newish friend, uh, and when we were first uh, getting to know each other, like we had seen each other at a couple different events and they said, hey, we should like go for a walk sometime and, and hang out. And I said, okay, let's do that. Uh, and this person uh, is on the spectrum and it's important to say because one of the things, the autism spectrum, uh, one of the hallmarks of uh, the autism spectrum is not picking up on social cues. It's a challenge for those who are autistic, um, but in my life, <laughs> it is a great gift. 
because there's so many stupid, invisible rules we make up in how we talk to each other, and sometimes we just need someone who doesn't care about them to say the truth, ask a really good question. So my new friend, uh, we were going, starting the walk. We, I mean, we really didn't know each other at all <laughs> yet. We start the walk, and the first thing they say to me is, so when did you start loving Jesus? And I t- like, took this breath like, oh, okay, we're going we're gonna to talk about something big. Okay. Uh, but, I, but I answered, and we talked the whole time, and they shared their questions about faith, the things that they struggled with, the things that brought them joy. And I feel so lucky. You know, I know I get to do this for a living. I know I get to ask questions and hear about people's faith, but I will tell you that I feel just as awkward as everybody else in the world trying to have a meaningful conversation with friends to to talk about the things that matter. Like, how do you ask a question like that? And I was so grateful to be asked. I don't know that anyone asks me really about my faith in my life, like that anyway. And And I keep thinking about it, you know, My heart was burning within me, you know, that something holy happens when we share these moments. I'm going to take a risk today. Uh, Forgive me if it's terrible. I really want you to have that experience, too, if you haven't. I really want you to talk to each other. And I realize when we do a question, it's always something pithy, like last week, uh, you know, what kind of, you know, scars do you have and, like, good injury stories. Also, new people, we don't do this every week. It's like every now and then. Like, (laughs) I just happened to do two in a row. Okay, but here's what I want you to do. If you can find some people around you, and if one of you, or all of you, if you have, I mean, we're only going to take a few minutes, can you share a holy experience that you've had? If you're really, if this is like too much, I get it. Take a piece of paper, write it down instead. You'll tell your neighbor you don't really want to do this, and it's okay, we're not going to shame each other. But if you're willing... I would really love it if you would share a story, and I, I'm just going to hope that something cool will happen, okay? Will you take a few minutes and try it?
Okay, I'm going to start calling you back. Or you didn't not do it. I don't know what you, what you talked about. Uh, it sounded meaningful. I don't know if it was. But if you did have share a meaningful story, uh, make sure you introduce yourself, too. <laughs> Should have started with that. Um, I'm really convinced that, that God shows up when we, when we share things that matter. Uh, when we share our heart and our and our lives and our stories and the ways that God shows up for us, uh, I'm I'm convinced that that happens. I don't know if you had a heart burning with any moment this morning. Uh, if you if you want to keep continuing your conversations after the service, you should. Um, if you feel brave enough to ask somebody that you love uh, to tell you a holy moment in their lives, uh, all we have are these witnesses. Like, all we have is our hearts to share with each other. Like, you may be the reason somebody uh, has an experience of God's love and grace. Just like you might be the reason, like somebody else's story might be the reason why you are here in this moment today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Same as you. of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. We pray for all aid workers who feed hungry people, 
especially those in Gaza. God of grace. Our God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and show us how to protect the climate, that this planet will sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. We pray for all friends and family who serve in the military. We ask you to keep them safe and bring them home safely. God of grace. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. We pray for hope, for strength, for comfort, for friends and family of this beloved congregation. We pray for those who are sick or injured. We especially pray for Irene's son, for Donna, for Brenda, Cindy, Marion, Bill, Linda, and Linda, Nicole, Valerie, Art, Chuck, Stephanie, we pray for peace and comfort for the family of Karen Lapp. We lift those to you now. God of grace. <laughs> oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors near and far as ourselves and to share in beloved community we especially pray for our sister congregation in Ipalamwa, Tanzania, and we pray for our Asia missionaries, Susan and Isha, God of grace. Oh God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember, and share their love. Comfort those who mourn. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. <laughs> we welcome our, our, our Sunday school children crept in while I was busy, <laughs> and so we're glad they're here, and so we're all together to share a, uh, a song and a word of peace.
Please stand. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true bread, true, true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We prayed together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. You may be seated. I'll invite the communion assistants to come forward at this time. And then, as a reminder to everybody, you can take the wafer and dip it into the wine or the grape juice. The grape juice is the lighter colored liquid in the smaller cup, and uh, there's gluten free there in the center for those who need it. Everybody is welcome here to receive communion.
disciples used to gather in the name of Christ to stop and with thanks to God the giver break the bread and bless the cup Hallelujah Alleluia. So now bind our friendship up. All our meals and all our living Make a sacrament of you that by caring, helping, giving we may be disciples true. Alleluia, alleluia. We will serve.
invite you to stand as you're able. And let's pray. Shepherding God, you've prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Remember how I said I had a whole bunch of announcements and then I didn't give that many? I, I remembered one. <laughs> Um, I wanted to let you know about uh, Lee Unruh's, uh, Pastor Tom mentioned last week that he was in his final days. He did pass away last week. Um, his memorial service will be this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock here with a visitation at 10 o'clock beforehand. Excuse me. All right. Receive. Oh, Brian. Okay, one more. So this is good. I forgot some announcements. The RIC conversation will actually be in here after the service uh, due to some tech issues. So if you'd like to be a part of that conversation, just don't leave. <laughs> I'll lock the doors. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All right, receive a blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, the spirit of Easter hope, bless you now and always. are filled with gladness. Hallelujah. We sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah. We sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Now he sends us all out. Strong in faith amid doubt. Strong in faith amid doubt. Tell to all the joyful gospel.